Hello viewers, you are welcome to this video. Today I want us to look at what injective, surjective and bijective functions are. Yes, when you say a function is injective, what do you mean? When you say a function is surjective, what do you mean? And when you say a function is bijective, what do you mean? Injective function. Injective function is the same as one to one function. One to one function. Yes, when a function is one to one, then you see that it is injective. It is injective. So let's look at that one first. Now, because a function is said to be injective, if each member of the set X, that is the domain, is related to a distinct member of the set Y, which is the codomain. Yes. So when you have something like this, when you have something like this, a function, let me see, F, which mass from set S to Y, then you have A, B, C. And this one is M and Q. This way. This function is a one to one function because every member here is related to a distinct or different member of the set Y. So this is the domain, this is the codomain. Yes. I see. You guys, I have a video on what is a function, and there I clearly define what a function is, and you looked at so many other things. So those of you who have not watched that video, you advise to to watch that one before watching this. Okay, so have it this way. So this is a one-to-one -one function. This is a one-to-one -one function. That x mass on to maybe y. Yes, a function f. When you say that s pass on to y, it's said to be one to one if f of a equal to f of b implies a is equal to b. What this means is that when you are given a function and you ask to find whether it is one to one or injective, what you do is that you find f of a and you create it to f of b. If you're able to work on whatever you get, and at the end of the day you get A equal to B, then you can confidently say that the given function is one to one or injective. Right? Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look at an example. You can say you can say that one determine determine whether F that S mass on to one over S plus seven S not equal to negative seven is injective or not? Yes, it's injective or not. You can give something like this. Yes, is it one to one or not? So solution. Solution. And the same as f of x is equal to 1 over s plus 7. So this means that f of a is equal to f of b hmm? implies this implies f of a means that just look at a function. Whenever you see x, you write a. So this one will be when you put a here, this one will be 1 over a plus 7. And this is equal to f of b, wherever you see x, right b. 1 over b plus 7. I see it. Now, this is the same as a plus 7 is equal to b plus 7. You invert this one, you invert this one. You see it, and this is true. Now, 7 will cancel 7. I see it. So, a is equal to b. Because you have been able to show that f of a equal to f of b implies a equal to b, you can say that this function is a one-to-one -one, uh, function. So since 
f of a equal to f of b implies a equal to b function f is injective. Yes, it's injective or one to one. Yes, I see. So it's not equal at all. Just find f of a equal to f of b and work it. If you work and get a equal to b, then you can say that the function is injective or one to one. Now let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. You can see determine whether the function. Let me clear this one. Whether you can see determine whether this function is f of s is equal to s squared minus nine all over s squared. S greater than zero. Injective or not? Yes, we can give you something like this. Determine whether this function is injective or not. Is one to one or not? Solution. Solution. Now this is question number. Solution. F of s is equal to s squared minus 9 all over s squared and we are saying that x should be greater than what? 0 now, what this means is that f of a look on the board, f of a is equal to f of b now f of a means that whatever you see x, you should write a and so this one will be a squared minus 9 all over a squared and this is equal to f of b, wherever you see x, you should write b. This one will be b squared minus 9 all over b. Are you seeing it? We have an issue. Now here, if you cross multiply, hmm? if you cross multiply, this one multiply, this one multiply, this one multiply this. So I'm going to have something like this. I'm going to have a squared times b squared minus 9 is equal to b squared times a squared minus 9. Are you seeing it? Now if we expand this, we are getting a squared b squared minus 9 a squared. Let me write the 9 word. Are you seeing it? And this is equal to a squared b squared. Because b squared a squared is equal to a squared b squared minus 9 b squared. Now if we were a squared b squared, We'll cancel a squared b squared. Because when this one comes here to be negative, it will cancel it. On the other hand, if this one goes there to be negative, it will cancel it. So this one will cancel this. So this one will cancel it. So it means that we are left with negative 9a squared. It's equal to negative 9b squared. Negative will cancel negative. So, and then 9 will cancel 9. So we are going to have a squared is equal to what? b squared. Like when you divide both sides by, both sides by, negative 9, that is. So a squared is equal to b squared. Now what does it mean that a is equal to square root of what? b squared. a is equal to square root of b squared. And square root of b squared is equal to plus or minus b. Plus or minus b. Right it? Yes. Now, this means that, this means that a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b. Yes. Now, if you guys look on the board, a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b. Now, let's look at what is happening. So, because a is equal to a negative b, we cannot say that it is injective or one to one. Uh, if you guys look on the board, you see when the question was given to us, we are given this condition. S is greater than zero. We say now you have replaced the S with A and then the B. Do you see? Yes. So it means that S can be A. And we are saying that A is equal to B and A is equal to negative B. What this means is that S should be greater than zero. So if you are getting the value of A, it should be positive. Yes, the value of A should be positive. Because any number which is greater than zero is positive. So what this means, you cannot accept a negative answer. 
Yes, you can accept a negative answer. Because you use the A and B to replace the X. So if A is equal to B, okay, A is equal to negative B cannot be accepted because there is a condition. The value of X, which in this case is A or B, should be greater than zero. So what this means is that A equal negative B cannot be accepted. In the acceptable answer is a is equal to b. You can accept this one. Are you it? You can accept a equal to negative b. Now, if you are accepting this one, then what this means is that, so you see that, so this, this implies that f of a is equal to f of b implies a is equal to b. So if f of a equal to f of b implies a equal to b, then you can say that the given function is injective. So therefore, the function f is of injective or one to one. Surjective function. Why do you say that a function is surjective? Now a surjective function is the same as onto function. A function is said to be an onto function or surjective if the range of that function is the same as the codomain of that function. US a function is said to be bijective if it is both injective and surjective. Again, a function is said to be bijective if it is both injective and surjective. In other words, if a function is both one to one and onto function, then that function is said to be bijective. For example, when you have this, this function A, B, C. US, this is a bijective function because it is injective, that is one to one, and it's also surjective onto function. Yes, so this is a bijective function. Thank you very much for your attention. For more of this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shamala Jr. If you have not done so.